Now, this section, we're going to talk about Ethernet. It is a link protocol. Remember, a link is, is the section across a physical cabling or a wireless section between two nodes. Ethernet is a major protocol over almost all local area networks and over a lot of wide area network connections, basically DSL, cable modems, so on and so forth. Here we have the links shown in our case study. Notice in the middle of the links in this case we're showing switches, but earlier we were showing hubs. Remember switches are intelligent devices that make decisions. We can call them routing decisions, but they're made on using a MAC address or NIC address inside one local area network. What we're going to talk about specifically just to describe Ethernet is the link between the client and router A. So how do you get data from the client to router A? Remember the other links are AB, BC going over route 1 or AF, FE or ED going over route 2. There's your data link between the client and router A. Notice the data links have two separate OSI layers, the data link layer and the physical layer, but normally they are tied together to, by some protocol on the local layer network. And in this case today we're talking about the protocol Ethernet. So this is what it physically looks like. Notice there is the connectivity item or connectivity piece of hardware is a network interface card. Notice on the client there's one network interface card on and they're going into the router there's another network interface card and in the middle rather than the switch we showed you earlier here is the hub is going from the client down to router A. Again this is the physical link. There's the hub in the th on the third floor, there's the client and the router A is down in the basement of the building. Now, if you're looking at the actual logical link, here it is. In the topological or logical architecture in the OSI model, the data link again is inside the client and inside of router A. When it really gets down to it, here is what happens inside the client. There's an Ethernet frame. It has the destination MAC address of the router, the SA source address of the, the client, the SAP is an identifier, normally 08 would identify that you're carrying 1500 bytes of IP data. All right. At the beginning, we'll talk about what that is in just a second, there is a preamble, and at the end there is a cyclic redundancy check. What happens is, after it puts in all the control information, the destination, source, address, and SAP, it also puts the data in the 1500 bytes. Then the network interface card or driver for the network interface card calculates a add or divide from the destination address all the way through the 1500 bytes of data and it puts the answer at the end of the frame, a cyclic redundancy check. What's going to happen is after the data is transferred over to the router, it's going to calculate the same figure over the data address, the DA, the SA, the SAP, the 1500 bytes. It'll add up all of that, check the answer with the CRC, and if there's any errors, it won't get a good result and it will discard the entire frame so that there's no errors. So the key thing that the data link layer protocol does is transfer data across cables or modems or, or wireless connections and then it checks for errors at the other end to make sure there's, there's no errors in the data being transferred. One other thing, notice the preamble, PBL there. Before this data can be transmitted over the physical layer, the Ethernet frame actually transmits 64 bits, 101010, to set up timing between the network interface card on the client and the network interface card in router A. Remember, all the hub does is it receives the ones and zeros and regenerates them down a physical cabling. Now, back to and just to throw in another piece of information related to this picture. In this picture we have uh, basically six devices. 
and notice the switch is the device that's in the middle. We put that red switch in there to remind you that all, most of the pictures just have the smaller version. But the key is companies want to divide their networks, their local area networks, into smaller groups of nodes for security purposes normally. Sometimes it's done for performance sake. But they need a device to do it. So what they do is they, they can put in a table like that's shown inside of this switch a group of devices and then create what is known as a virtual local area network or a VLAN. Ethernet is the normal protocol that does this and so in this case one VLAN is ports 0, 2, 3, and 5. Another VLAN is ports 1, 4, and 5. So when the client sends its information down the cable to this switch, it will only repeat the information out the ports in table 1, which in this case would be ports 2, 3, and 5. By segregating the information out in this way, it actually creates two separate networks. And in order to move the day from VLAN 1 to VLAN 2, it would have to have an IP address. This is just to remind you that when it comes to our logical view, we have Ethernet frames in all the devices. The they all have network interface cards in between. So the information and the equipment inside of local area networks is basically network interface cards. And then in order to divide it up even more, you'll either have a hub or a switch. This is to give you a picture that there is one link that is not Ethernet. It is frame relay. If you look inside the that cloud where it says frame relay over T1, you would have a data link protocol frame relay that moves information from router B to router C. So data link protocols in this case, we have two of them. The lower level data link protocol is HDLC over that T1, which is 1.544 megabits. So from router F to router E, you have the local exchange carrier and internet exchange carriers, and then another local exchange carrier, which are all telephone companies. You have a T1 from router F to the first local exchange carrier. It carries that T1 to the inner exchange carrier. Normally, the protocols in this case are uh, synchronous optical network protocols, and basically the devices are known as add drop multiplexers. The data link protocol here is HDLC, high level data link control. So basically, we have a wide area network link all the way from router F to E, and it goes across a physical layer T1. But that T1 is carried inside of Sonnet by the carrier, moving it from router. F to router E. Back to frame relay. Frame relay links are a little bit different. The physical layer in frame relay in this case is a T1 going from router F to that frame relay switch on the left hand side. Or from the frame relay switch on the right hand side, it goes from there to router E. But from the between the two frame relay switches, frame relay frames are carried inside of asynchronous transfer mode cells. So all of the nodes inside the carrier network or that uh, cloud there are ATM nodes. Just to give you additional information, between those ATM nodes is our synchronous optical network uh, physical layers, not T1s. Some people could call it a T1 because it's 1.544 megabits. But the key is this basically has two links. The, the full length from F to E, but inside the carrier network there is a link layer protocol called asynchronous transfer mode.